So I've flown halfway across the world, all the way to Lindau, to be part of the Nobel Laureates meeting. It's a great opportunity to come and meet Nobel Laureates and get a bit of inspiration and insight. I've come to the meeting because it's a great opportunity to collaborate. There are 500 other students here from all over the world and of course also the, the Nobel Laureates. The most incredible outcome from Professor Zerhausen's work is that they've now been able to manufacture a cervical cancer vaccine. So that means girls like me and all girls to come may be protected against cervical cancer. But uptake isn't 100% yet, even in Western countries. People say, I'm not taking the vaccine and I have informed consent. But you're the most informed person about well, this. Well, in Britain and Australia, you have a very good uh, result of yes. the vaccinations. <laughs> right. Go Aussie. Yeah. More than 80% of the electrical groups were vaccinated. And in Austria, it's less than 5%. So there are really vast differences between the countries. And, and, and should you vaccinate only girls or also boys? Because boys are yeah. the transmission, right? I would be, even, be a little bit more provocative and say if you would only vaccinate boys, we really? probably have a better result than only vaccinated <laughs> really? The point is usually the boys in that age are a little bit more proactive yeah. than the girls. Transmitters. Hello. Nice to meet you. My name is Chen from Shanghai, China. Chao Wang, ni hao ma. Ah, you can speak Chinese. Well, <laughs> I was born in Shanghai. Yeah, I say a few words. What kind of student are you? I am now in Shanghai International Joint Cancer Institute. We work together to develop new antibodies in treating cancers. Um, cancer by antibodies? Yes, it's by antibodies. It's great if it works. Yes. Uh, oh, I think it has a great future. One of the most important features of a young scientist to work on an important problem, which is what you're doing, but mostly to be excited about what you are doing. This is one of the things we try to inspire in the student, to tell them that research is fun. It's really amazing, just like being a dream, because I have never uh, imagined that I can have a chance to talk with Professor Fisher like this. Lindau is not made for Nobel laureates. They are made for students. We come here for you. This week in Lindau, there are a lot of great minds here and they are talking about research and science and medicine also. And it's just a great atmosphere and a great feeling of science and it's just wonderful. What? You don't know what the Nobel Prize is? We're going to have to do something about that. Whoa! Hey, the dude's coming out of the TV. <laughs> Do you think it's possible to do clinical practice and research, to combine them? Well, that was my goal initially, was to do That's both, plus too. teaching. However, I learned that to be the best doctor, you have to do clinical medicine most of the time. Yeah. To be the best scientist, you have to do research most of the time. To do both and be outstanding with both is probably not possible. Why? <laughs> Because if you're a little bit of a doctor or you're a little bit of a scientist, you're not going to get patient referrals. You're going to make mistakes. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and you're going to have difficulty getting grants. I think competition is great, provided you win. <laughs> there are just so many different disciplines, so many top talents, and I'm sure they can influence my work in a positive way and just give me new ideas. When somebody comes to you with a really interesting question that just grabs you and you think that person is good at that kind of research, go for it. One of my students used to say, he used to say, we always have theory of the month because we'd have this some elaborate idea mm -hmm. about tetrahymena and its nuclear development and <laughs> stuff like that. And then it would, you know, of course, wasn't true. And we weren't doing experiments necessarily, but we'd no, just no, sort no. of talk about it, yeah. yeah. And I think that's really, really key. Yes. And, and what makes me sad is when people get 
very protective about their results and they won't talk about it until it's published, yeah. right? So I've just decided I spill the beans yeah. and basically I talk and I don't think there's ever been a time when it was, you know, a mistake to have done that. Yeah. But as it's students, paid. we want to go and, you know, just share and, yes. and tell, and yes. then there's yeah. other yes. people going, no, no, you've got Perfect. to wait and hang on. And my feeling was that's probably a mistake in the long run and yeah. probably even in the middle run as well. Yeah. They might publish something similar mm -hmm. yep. and maybe they publish it first and messier, right? But mm. you publish and that, in the end, it prevails. It's well worth it to talk. You know, educate and inspire and connect. That's what it's all about. <laughs> I'm going to share with you the experiences of a graduate student who has never grown up. Because I still work at the bench and I'm not the chairman of anything and I don't direct any laboratories. So I am still a child of science. I'm from Ecuador. Yeah. I grew up in a very small village in the uh, jungle of Ecuador. Oh, very good. Yeah. But then eventually I got interested in uh, nutrition. Yeah. You know about the W locus and um, whether that set of receptors and uh, ligands, you might say, controls the development of that neural network in the oh. gut. It's been known for quite a time. If you go and read about that, because you ought to know. What are you working on uh, right now? Well, I'm doing some crazies. Uh, you know, <laughs> when you get older, you can do crazy things. I'm, I'm actually making tiny gold particles, nanoparticles, uh, and using them to study how the kidney separates big molecules from small molecules. It's a very, very it's exciting. It's yeah. really exciting. Yeah, and enjoyable to do. I can give you a little piece of advice. Remember that whatever you did as a, po as a graduate student, Whatever you did as a postdoc, you do not have to do that for the rest of your life. You don't have to do it at all. You, that's training. What you do now is what's in here. Not what you learn, it's how you learn to use what you learn to do something new. So you can go into something quite different. You don't have to stay doing the same sort of thing. Here today is a very exciting time for me to be here and share my ideas with giants of research. For me, in, in Ecuador, we play a lot of soccer. It's like being in the major league.